The time will come when the US dollar will collapse and be worth no more than the scrap and or collection value of its cotton paper and dross coins. A collapse of the dollar will lead to a Mad Max style anarchy scenario. Anything could happen, and sometimes countries experience unrest during a currency collapse and debt crisis. It will lead to a total collapse of society. The effect of devalued dollar reserves on foreign countries is less clear and probably depends on each country. In case of a major systemic collapse, your best bet is probably to go for rural areas. Food shortage and urban unrest are the two things you are trying to avoid. Plenty of countries have lots of land. Like Russia, which probably be able to sustain a functioning energy market with their natural gas alternative. Scandinavia would be a good choice in summer. Welcome to the Atlantis Report. The dollar is the global trade and reserve currency. Everyone deals in dollars. So the countries which you should choose should be the ones who do not deal with the dollar at all but or will not in a few years. So, if they're able to sustain for a few years and go on without using the dollar, they'd be a great choice. The European countries have one drawback, i.e., their good amount of reserve and trade is in the dollar. So they will feel a ripple not immediately but after a while. The truth is that no country is safe if the dollar falls because someone or the other you deal with does rely on the dollar, and this leads to you getting affected if they do. It's the domino effect, and the first to start this fall would be the dollar. If the dollar collapses, foreign investors and central banks will stop demanding dollars. US bond prices will fall, or US interest rates will rise. Mortgage and credit card rates will soar, sending the US economy back into recession. The US government will respond by opening the monetary floodgates, printing as many paper dollars as necessary to keep the economy from collapsing. This surge in supply will send the value of the dollar through the floor. Prices for most things will skyrocket, and people whose life savings are in cash, bank, or dollar-denominated bonds will be wiped out. Many US financial and manufacturing companies will go belly up, along with their stockholders. Globally, Asian and European goods priced in suddenly appreciating currencies will become prohibitively expensive for US consumers. Throughout history, when a nation's debt exceeds its ability to repay even the interest, it can be assumed that the currency will collapse. Typically, governments exacerbate the situation by printing large amounts of currency notes in an effort to inflate the problem away, or at least postpone it. The greater the level of debt, the more dramatic the inflation must be to counter it. The more dramatic the inflation, the greater the danger that hyperinflation will take place. No government has ever been able to control hyperinflation. If it occurs, it does so quickly and always ends with a crash. Although there are observers, myself included, who frequently discuss what a reserve currency crash would mean to the world, there is little or no discussion as to how this would impact people on the street level, and perhaps that discussion should begin. When currencies crash, the state often tries to float a new currency. Sometimes, it's accepted, sometimes not. Generally, the people of the country, and those trading within the country, move immediately to, the next best thing. In 2009, when the Zimbabwe dollar crashed, several currencies were used, but the US dollar was the clear favorite, as it was the world's reserve currency and, therefore, the most, spendable, currency. No wonder, the Zimbabwean government fought the use of the dollar, as they wanted to retain control of the economy and the people. People were, therefore, penalized for using the US dollar and other currencies. And that's what most governments do, but here's where that idea usually falls down. First, the black market currency is so desired by the now jaded citizens that they do all they can to avoid the new official currency. Soon, most transactions, although illegal, are undertaken in the black market currency. Second, since no one really wants the new currency, even the political leaders are soon using the black market currency. Eventually, the black market currency is legalized since it's the only truly workable solution, and it often becomes the unofficial currency, if not actually the official one. First, the euro crash. It's safe to say that the EU, the US, and quite a few other jurisdictions are nearing currency crashes, and in all likelihood, the euro will go before the dollar. So, unless the EU has already prearranged a new euro, the US dollar might well be chosen as an immediate solution to the problem, as the US dollar is presently recognized and traded throughout Europe. Therefore, a relatively painless transfer could be made. Then, the dollar crashes. 
However, the dollar, which is presently praised as being a sound currency, is really only sound in relation to the euro and some other lesser currencies. Once its less stable brother, the euro collapses, the dollar will be exposed. As the US dollar is a fiat currency and is on the ropes, the US and any other country that is using the dollar as its primary currency when the time comes will experience a currency emergency at the street level that will be unprecedented. The big question that is generally not being discussed is, the day after the crash and thereafter, what will be the currency that is used to buy a bag of groceries, a tank of gas, a meal at a restaurant? Certainly, the need will be immediate and will be on a national level in each impacted country, affecting everyone. And then, I have discussed for some time that the US will be prepared ahead of time with a new electronic currency. This will serve three purposes, it will allow the US government to blame paper currencies for the crash, in order to distract the public from recognizing that the government itself is the culprit. It will allow the US government to create a currency system that disallows the holding of tradable currency by the population. That is, a debit card would be created by banks through which all transactions must pass, assuring that all transactions are processed by, and thereby subject to the control of, a bank. It will allow the US government to have knowledge of every penny earned and spent by any individual or organization, allowing for direct debit income taxation. If the US does institute such a system, US citizens will then become the most economically controlled people in the world, overnight. It's likely that a black market system would spontaneously be created by US citizens in order to bypass the new government system. A portion of daily trade would occur under the table. It would unquestionably be made illegal, and we can only speculate as to how prevalent it would become, 10% of all transactions? 30%? Anyone's guess. Surely, the government would crack down, and penalties might become severe. Anywhere else in the world, there would be greater freedom, but what would their currencies be? There are many countries that presently use the US dollar as one of their official currencies. After a crash, the greater the link to the US dollar, the greater the loss of economic freedom, although, in most such countries, the government is likely to be less efficient than in the US, which would work in favor of the individual. Such countries would also have the alternative of switching from the dollar to another dominant currency. With the euro and dollar gone, that currency might be the Chinese yuan. The difficulty with this possibility is that, presently, the yuan is not in common use on the street. Adoption of a currency such as a yuan would require a sudden switch in monetary policy, complete with teething problems. Nonetheless, recent developments amongst the BRICS and others indicate that many countries are already seeing the writing on the wall and are readying themselves for the use of the yuan as an alternative. A return to precious metals as currency? A further possibility is taking place in Mexico today. Mexico is remonetizing silver. A one-ounce pure silver Libertad coin will function in parallel to, and be interchangeable with, the existing paper peso. Banks will value the Libertad daily, based upon the silver price. Thus, Mexico will create a legal way for its citizens to protect themselves against the devaluation of the peso, whilst creating internal protection against currency crashes in other countries. If the Mexican government remains persistent in its plan, it will do more than simply help stabilize Mexico economically, it will serve as an example to other countries that, when the Goliaths of the euro and US dollar fall, there is a very sound alternative. Further, the more countries that follow this policy, the more silver, and for that matter, gold, would become an international currency. It would matter little to a gas station owner in Canada, Australia, or Chile whether his till was filled with coins marked, Mexico, or whether they said, Iceland, New Zealand, or, South Africa. After all, an ounce of silver is an ounce of silver, no matter what the issuing country is. As the great unraveling proceeds, we would be wise to monitor what happens with the Libertad in Mexico and watch for a similar return to precious metals in other jurisdictions. As this development progresses, we might wish to consider that, whatever jurisdictions are the most forceful in demanding the continued use of doomed paper currencies, or, worse, transferring into electronic currencies, we may choose to store our wealth, no matter how great or small, in a safer jurisdiction. Further, we may choose to reside in a jurisdiction where a currency crisis will be less likely to occur, to live under a government that does not seek to monitor and tax our every economic transaction. Unfortunately, there's little any individual can virtually do to change the trajectory of this trend in motion.
The best you can and should do is to stay informed so that you can protect yourself in the best way possible, and even profit from the situation. We think everyone should own some physical gold. Gold is the ultimate form of wealth insurance. It's preserved wealth through every kind of crisis imaginable. It will preserve wealth during the next crisis, too. But if you want to be truly crisis-proof, there's more to do. Most people have no idea what really happens when an economy collapses, let alone how to prepare. Given the global nature of the world market, particularly how oil is denominated in the US dollar, it's presumably that every economy will be considerably impacted. A shift to an international currency would probably occur quite quickly, one that includes a basket of currencies and a considerable amount of precious metal backing gold and silver. Countries are also likely to bypass the US dollar and enter into direct trade deals with each other, China has already started this with Russia, Brazil, Australia, and a number of other countries. This lowers the impact of US dollar exposure. Job stability, jobs that have exposure to American exports will definitely be the hardest hit, so manufacturing, etc. Additionally, a lot of the global innovation industries such as IT, biotech, entertainment, etc. will be hit hard, as will international finance, which involves US transactions. Jobs least likely to be impacted will be those that cater to local needs such as local agriculture and essential service industries. Little to no social unrest, this will depend heavily on the following, I think, availability of food, water, and essential services. One would prefer a country that is rather isolated, to avoid influxes of refugees that would create disturbances, has a stable democratic government, and has an efficient police force and army as last resort at maintaining the peace, and can maintain essential services without relying on external countries, water, sewage, electricity, food supply chain. Good availability of food and water, this is likely the biggest concern. Some people say that society is only ever three meals away from collapse. That might be overstating it, but highest on the list of concerns during a global collapse, instability caused by something like a rapid US dollar decline would be the accessibility of food and water. Availability will be most likely determined by proximity in a world where energy i.e. shipping prices are fluctuating wildly. Given this, some of the last places you would want to be would be countries such as United Arab Emirates, Saudi Arabia, Singapore, which rely heavily on imports of food and water, and also have huge exposure to the US dollar trade. A better list would include net exporters of food, countries that are isolated, preferably by sea, and countries that take care of their energy needs, particularly electricity in the short term and hydrocarbons in the medium to long term. Most countries in the Southern Hemisphere would be pretty resilient, like the South and some parts of Central America. Australia and neighbor New Zealand are possibly to be the counties with the highest standards of living after a global shock. They also mine a lot of gold. Below is my list of the top 10 countries where to consider relocating in the case of a dollar collapse and financial meltdown that will follow. Number 1, New Zealand, Australia another option. New Zealanders live in the fourth safest country in the world, behind Iceland, Denmark, and Austria. Six out of the top ten most peaceful countries were European, according to the 2015 Global Peace Index published yesterday by the Institute for Economics and Peace. The study ranks 162 nations based on factors like the level of violent crime, involvement in conflicts, and the degree of militarization. New Zealand was named fourth safest, down from second last year, and ahead of Switzerland in fifth, and Australia in ninth. Political and social stability, relative race harmony, geographical isolation and low levels of corruption and crime were behind the ranking. This is a exceptionally uncorrupt, honest, and decent society, and compared to other countries, this country is incredibly safe. Most of the safest countries had small populations and were based on strong welfare state principles. If you ever get sick or are in a car accident, you won't be asked to produce a credit card before you get treatment. That also helps build a stable society. Number 2, Switzerland. Switzerland is not a NATO member. Switzerland is not a member of the European Union. So, Switzerland is a neutral country. The land of Swiss people is a nuclear-free zone. It means Switzerland is very far away from world politics, games, and groupism. Switzerland has no fear of war-like situations. Switzerland will never face any nuclear attack in the future. Switzerland is not the enemy of any country. Everyone is Switzerland's friend in the world. Number 3, Denmark. 
Despite being a small country, Denmark used to face many serious issues due to crime and terrorism in the past. However, it has effectively tackled all those problems and today. It proudly stands second on the list of safest countries in the world. Since the year 2012, Denmark regularly reserves its spot on the list of happiest countries too. Denmark consists of more than 400 small islands, and it is well known for offering equal opportunities and individual freedom. There is almost no gap between the top level and lower level of organizations. The government of Denmark is keen on the concept of internationalization that makes this country one of the most popular destinations for expats. Since Danish and Swedish languages are closely related to each other, it wouldn't be a big surprise to see a Dane and Swede having a conversation happily in their own tongue. English is taught as a compulsory second language in secondary schools. So almost everyone here can converse well in English. Regardless of its small size, Denmark has many things to offer in terms of outdoor activities, sports, and culture. Number 4. Iceland. Iceland is hundreds of miles away from any other land, so it shouldn't be a target in a World War III scenario. What's more, it's a great spot for fishing, so survivors would have an abundant food supply to keep them going until the world is rebuilt. Iceland is a safe and beautiful country, which could be a lifesaver in the event of World War III. Number 5, Canada, but outside of populated areas. Canada is the second largest country in the world, and 20.6% of its total population comprises of foreign nationals. Let alone, it is claimed to have the highest immigrants rate per capita in the world. Although this factor alone is more than enough to call it the safest country in the world, it has a lot more other lucrative factors. The healthcare system in Canada is highly commendable. It offers universal public health insurance to all citizens and permanent residents at zero cost. By using this Medicare, one can have access to the universally high standard treatments at both private and public hospitals. This system has inspired many people who suffer from chronic conditions to move to this country for healthcare purposes. However, people with temporary residency can't avail the same benefits. When it comes to employment, it offers enormous scope with many open positions in energy sectors, in the communication industry, real estate, and financial services. People at Churchill, part of Canada, leave their car in unlocked status, in order to give escape for the persons who might encounter polar bears. Canada has one-fifth of the world's freshwater. This water count is accumulated from its 250,000 lakes. Their quality of tap water is often better than our bottled water. Canada is being the world leader in producing hydroelectricity. Canada has never been a target of terrorism. All this makes Canada one of the safest countries in the world. Number 6, Hawaii, but not in the populated areas. Hawaii is much safer than most of the USA in terms of crime. Number 7, Costa Rica. Costa Rica is the best Latin country to live, work, and invest. It is considered to be the Switzerland of the Americas. It is also considered the Silicon Valley of Latin America. It has the highest literacy rate of all Latin America, it's at 97%, that's higher than the US. It has the best healthcare in Latin America, much more affordable than the United States. It is one of the most biodiverse countries in the world. Number 8, Chile. Chile is one of the most advanced countries in South America. Chile is a first world alternative in Latin America, with Latin America's highest standard of living. In fact, throughout the Americas, only the United States and Canada rate higher for the overall standard of living. The water is drinkable, the phone and internet are fast and reliable, and the public transit system is modern and efficient. The highways are modern, fast, and well-maintained. Number 9. Argentina, Patagonia. Some parts of it largely remain untouched and pristine. The farmland here is still cheaper than other places in the world. The strength of nature is very ever-present here, from the majestic Andes to the lonely cliffs by the seaside. It has one of the lesser population densities in the world, with about 2 million people dispersed across more than a million square kilometers in two countries. Number 10, Slovenia. Slovenia is a tiny beautiful country. People here seem most pretty and most welcoming. It has cavemen-friendly territory which has over 10,000 caves in Slovenia. Practically Slovenes have an abundance of self-confidence, have great respect for each other, and are broad-minded people. So no wonder why it's on the safest countries list. Slovenians love their towns. 
Their capital Ljubljana can be translated into the loved one. It has coastline around the only 46 kilometers, but the entire coastline is like heaven made. It is the safest country not only for humans but for animals too. This is the reason why Slovenia still has over 400 brown bears. It is surrounded by four friendly countries Austria, Italy, Croatia, and Hungary. Thus it doesn't need to involve in a fight with any country. Half of Slovenia's surface is filled with forest 10,000 square kilometers. It is the third most wooded country in Europe. Slovenes have 53.6% protected land, which is higher than any other country except Venezuela in the world. This was the Atlantis Report. Please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.